the Chase Thomas Podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. But uh, let's transition here. Um, final thing on Tennessee football. The case for uh, the Vols being uh, beating Georgia this Saturday and the case against uh, the, the Vols beating the Dogs on Saturday. Jack Foster. Yeah, so you talk about a quarterback that is good when he's not being pressured and just absolutely atrocious when he's under pressure. Carson Beck is the poster child of that. He has a zero QBR in the last month when pressured. He has been just downright awful. Um, so that's good for Tennessee. Now, here's the stats, by the way. 43 yards, five picks, seven sacks, under pressure in the last three games, zero QBR. And it's not like he's getting pressure just all the time. The O-line didn't play great last week, but it's not like Georgia's O-line is, you know, just completely falling flat every game and Carson Beck's just constantly underdressed. It's not the case. Um, so he's not good under pressure. You got James Pierce coming into town. I like Tennessee's defensive line against anybody. So that is how that is how Tennessee can win this game um, is by making Carson Beck make mistakes, pressuring Carson Beck and forcing him to do what he's been doing in these games in which he's been playing awful. Um, Nico obviously has to play. I think you look at Tennessee's offense versus this defense. They're just going to ride with Dylan Sampson. Uh, I think Georgia's defense is gettable at times. We saw them get carved up during some drives through, through the air last week um, with, Jackson Dart and Simmons. So I think if Nico plays and he's on, it can set up well for Tennessee. I like a lot of matchups for Tennessee in this game. You know, just the the narrative around the game always is going to point to Georgia no matter which way you slice it with them. Coming off a loss, back against the wall, can't lose. But if you look at the matchups just down the, down the line, it's it's hard to pick against Tennessee on paper. Um just because of how little Carson Beck has, you know, how bad he's frankly played in the last month. So that's how you win is Carson Beck keeps playing bad and Tennessee doesn't get gashed in the run game, which given the way George's, you know, not been able to run the ball really well as of late should set up well too. Did y'all see the stat that the last time Kirby, who uh, Kirby lost to the last time he lost two games at Georgia? It was so, Ole Miss and Tennessee, Ole Miss and Tennessee right? in 2016. Back so back. yeah, that was going around. I do have to clarify. Later in the year, Georgia lost to Vandy in Florida back to back. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think but I think the person who tweeted that out was mistaken. They lost like I said later in the year. But the last time, of course, Tennessee beat Georgia the week prior, Georgia had lost in Oxford. So there is still that. You got blown out in Oxford that game too. Yep. My memory serves. They have not 14. fared well in uh in Oxford in those two trips. Different coaches though. Wasn't he Freeze the coach at Ole Miss at that time? I think it was Hugh Freeze's last year, maybe second to last year. It was after, I mean, it was 2016, and the two good teams were 14 15. Um, yeah, I think 16 was, I think he got fired in fall camp 17. Ethan, why you think Tennessee can beat Georgia and why you think Tennessee will not beat Georgia on Saturday? I, I come from a similar angle to Jack, but I'll phrase it slightly differently. If Tennessee can keep Georgia under, say, 100 rushing yards. I, I don't see a scenario where the balls lose because I'm going to piggyback on what Jack said. I don't think Carson Beck can beat this defense. I, I Maybe maybe Georgia's defense can force Tennessee into mis some mistakes, and that's kind of a prelude to my um, how Georgia could win. But if Georgia can't run the ball, they're not going to be able to move the football because because Beck has been that atrocious in pressure situations. I, I understand he's at home, but it's still late. Uh, against Texas, he was terrible. I think he threw three interceptions against Texas. He threw three against Alabama, which doesn't have a very good defense. He struggled against Florida. He's, he's struggled as of late more than he has earlier in the year. Um, Georgia is, uh, I think they're 0-2 in games where they rush for under 100 yards. So keep on keep them under that total. Uh, I just, I don't see how Georgia scores enough to, uh, it'll probably be a slugfest, uh, which, which I guess, uh, kind of segues to to how they can lose, and that's I mean, let's let's be honest here. The, what what Jack said, the narrative of Tennessee playing Georgia, not just playing Georgia, but going to Sanford St Sanford Stadium and wanting to walk away with a win in a high pressure situation, something that Heupel just has not done on the road. Um, I don't know. You 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 talk about the fact that I've I've been beating this drum all year. Uh, 
penalties are going to kill this team at some point. I'm telling you, it's, it's, they're going to do something dumb. I'm not sure they'll be able to get out of their own way in that regard. If, if they can be very disciplined, if Heupel can coach the game of his life, then, you know, sure. But that that's how Tennessee loses is I think they do it to themselves. I think just exactly what Jack said across the board on paper, Tennessee is, they match up well and they have, they're, they're better than a lot of teams that have given Georgia trouble to this point in the season, I guess I'll say. Exactly. Kirby Smart is excellent, excellent, excellent at getting his guys ready to play in high-pressure situations like this. But that's probably what people said ahead of last week as well, uh, ahead of Ole Miss. That was just as high-pressure of a situation. They lose that game there. Well, they did lose that game. But they lose that game, and they're in more trouble. If they lose this one, they're they're probably out of the playoff picture. So so they're, they're backed up against a wall. It's hard. It's hard to pick against Kirby Smart in that, in that scenario. It's funny how different the vibes are in this iteration versus two years ago. Both top 10 situations, obviously more losses coming in for both sides. But I mean, I don't think either fan base is coming in cocky and confident about how this game's going to go. Like, it's just kind of wild. Like, I, I, I don't think either Tennessee or Georgia fans are going to come into uh, Athens on Saturday. Like, oh, we're ready. Like, this is like, I, I think everyone's just kind of walking on nervous energy here. And then uh, obviously an elimination game for college playoff reasons for georgia we'll see on tennessee what that ultimately means with the potential loss in athens but um i don't know that's why the games are played and there's still a lot of other football that can happen that can kind of wreck that i mean the old miss i think at florida and old miss egg bowl mississippi state you just never know um down the stretch it just takes one of those teams to stumble even if tennessee goes down um on saturday in athens but what say you ryan yeah oh sorry jack go ahead no no right go uh, I, I think it's you know it's what Ethan and Jack have said. I mean, they've they've laid it out well. I, I will say the thing that's interesting move about Carson Beck's interceptions. He's thrown twelve interceptions this season. He's thrown all but one of them in just four games. So it's not always been a problem, but when it's been a problem, it's been a big problem. And I think it Tennessee. Spirals. Yeah, I think Tennessee needs it to be a big problem in this game. Um, just because I, I don't have a ton of confidence in what Tennessee's offense is going to be able to do. Uh, we've seen them struggle on the road. We've seen them struggle in hostile environments. We've seen Tennessee. Better receiving core struggle with the physicality of Georgia's defensive backs. Um, I, you know, I, I just have, don't have a ton of faith in them. You're talking about Nico going into the most difficult game that he's been in in college, um, a game where I don't think Tennessee's going to be able to just lean on its run, a game I definitely think Tennessee's going to need to make some passes, some throws in the red zone to score touchdowns instead of field goals. All those things I don't have a ton of confidence in Tennessee doing. So, um I definitely see the path to Tennessee winning. Like I think these teams are more evenly matched, and I, I am a little surprised by the spread just from that standpoint. Because um, I just don't, like Georgia's. What offense, is it at I now? I Eight think nine and a half earlier. Nine. Okay. That was that was like six hours ago. So hmm. to me, it seems like a six and a half type game. Yeah. Um, hmm. Even yeah, maybe even less. I, I wonder how much Nico influences in that line. I do think it was like hovering around seven last week. I'll Um, check it real quick while we're talking. What was it before the year? Wasn't it up? Was it near 20? 17. 17? 17 and a half, yeah. I think 17 Um, and a half. I think there's a path. Like, I I think (laughs) it it wouldn't surprise me if Tennessee won this game. It wouldn't surprise me if Tennessee lost this game. The only thing that would surprise me is if this game's not close. Um, I think... I mean, at this point, Tennessee's defense, we can question the run defense over the last couple weeks. We can look at... We can pick apart some stuff like you, you you can nitpick a little bit they still gave up less than 300 yards of total offense um to mississippi state um i just i just look at it and i think there's just gonna there's just no way that tennessee doesn't have dylan sampson carry the ball a bunch and i think dylan sampson's gonna find some success against this georgia defense which is wild to say i think he's gonna be able to run on him deshaun bishop i think will be back in the rotation i think they'll be a little bit healthier there so they'll be able to rotate and do some stuff um the offensive line's playing better than it ever has lance Hurd's really settled in um at left tackle like i think he's rocking and rolling Co- having cooper is obviously a big deal in this spot um on the road environment i i just think this defense has more guys on it that can like the Jermaine McCoy's with his one handed picks um, and against Alabama and his big pick against Oklahoma. He's shown up in big spots. Um, I don't think Georgia has the horses outside to scare this Tennessee secondary, which is what we talked about all preseason. It's just like, there's not even the tight ends. Like there's no Brock Bowers looming on the perimeter there. I don't see how Georgia's offense 
really blows this open. Like Stetson Bennett was launching bombs to Arian Smith and rolling out and doing all kinds of stuff and just doing things that Tennessee's defenses have struggled with in the past, like those kind of mobile type quarterbacks. They haven't. Re- that's not really been the case with these kind of statue in the pocket type guys. Like I, I just. Graham Mertz beat you over the middle because Graham Mertz was really good and comfortable over the middle. Carson Beck wasn't basically allowed to throw over the middle on Saturday. It was all side to side screens and they didn't, I mean, there was not a whole lot of, um, Hey, let Carson Beck rip it, um, in Oxford on Saturday. I just don't see how that all gets cleaned up in a week. I think the, the issues with their, uh, offensive line, like their tackles are in in bad shape like they're they might be on i I don't even know which uh available tackle they're gonna go with at left tackle james pierce is gonna have a good game he's played really well in sec play tennessee's gonna rotate there i I don't think you're gonna have time for those big time long throws that georgia was able to pull off um against tennessee two years ago so i just my main thing is i don't see how this game's not close and i know that's gonna be agonizing for tennessee fans either way which however this game goes but i'd be very surprised if this is one of those georgia pull away games that we've seen the first three um, uh, games of this series. I just don't think that's going to be the case with how these two teams are going to match up on Saturday. I would agree, I agree that it's hard to see, you know, Georgia open it up like that early, but it is still completely on the table for a Tennessee offensive disaster. Like, but they don't do defense, that anymore, really. Though can, this year, what they don't do in a disaster. They they're gonna no, go conservative. Chase, they went three straight games scoring zero points. Oh in the first I, no, half. no no no! I'm saying offensive disaster and turnovers or things like that. Like they're not making just backbreaking plays on offense. They're not convert. Like they're driving down I mean, the Dylan field Samson's and fumbling in the red in how zone. Many games? Say it again. How many games has Dylan Sampson fumbled in now? I think three straight. <laughs> But they're not in the red zone. Like, that's the thing. It's like, none of these are, like, backbreakers. Like, these are all, like, they're driving down the field or they're doing stuff and you're like... Those are I mean, backbreakers in games like this because points maybe. are going to be hard to come Have you seen from. this Georgia offense? I don't know if it'll be a backbreaker here. Like, I don't I don't know if that's uh, on the table with this Georgia offense. I don't it, know if there will be those opportunities. It felt like in all those situations where Samson did fumble, though, Tennessee was moving the ball very yes. well. He fumbles and then they suck the rest of the first half. That, I think that's yeah. what Jack and Ryan are kind of alluding to. Like, if you get to yeah. that point... And, and yeah. you know, you have an excellent first drive and then Samson does it again. Or I'm not even trying to just harp on Samson, any of them. A- anybody fumbles the ball, you have a big drive, you get the momentum going, and then you just lose it all of a sudden. I, that's just going to take the wind out of their sails, I feel like. Let me go and throw another scenario out here, and it's going to just put everybody listening to this in some utter cold sweats thinking about it, waking up tonight. Tennessee, third and seven at their own 30-yard line. Pass protection absolutely breaks down on the road. Nico strip sack. Like, yeah, it hasn't been as work bad this year. He also did he did get stripped on the five yard line in the game against Oklahoma. The defense bailed him out. Look, defense might bail him out again, but all those plays, all the field positions. The offensive line are, was in a much worse place though in Oklahoma than where they're at right now. I'm not buying the hype of the offensive line that you are at this point. Mm. They've played better. They have. I'm not going to say they haven't. They've played worse teams. They've played at home. They've consistently been worse both this year and Josh Heupel's tenure on the road in big games. They're playing the best defensive line that they've faced this season. To me, this is the test uh, for the offensive line to truly say, all right, you have turned the corner. Y'all are much better. Playing better, not an unmitigated disaster, but I can very easily see them being bad again uh, on Saturday. Yeah, and I mean, you just got to think about all the stuff beyond XO. It's a night game on the road. Like, it's going to be really tough. And if you don't think that Georgia is still capable of, of putting together just a couple of drives, and that could all be all that's needed for Georgia to have a two-score lead at halftime. I mean, would it surprise you guys if I told you Tennessee's offense can't move the ball, Georgia's doing a good job stopping the run, and it's 14 zip There's a quarterback. <laughs> think about what Georgia no, think about what Georgia did to Texas. I like, bet the quarterback yeah. is better than Nico on the road. I'm not sure about that. I'm not a big Quinn Ewers guy. I know, I know Jackson. He's I'm not a big Nico Quinn Ewers guy either, but he's better than Nico right now. I don't know. Nico has played his best football the last eight quarters. Nico's Come last on, eight Jace. quarters have been good. Nico's they last have, eight no, quarters have been, been really good. good. I agree. His last eight quarters have been good. He played the worst defense maybe in the history of America in Mississippi <laughs> State last week. He but he also did it against Kentucky, Kentucky, who Georgia State. struggled with. He played He played well against Kentucky. You can, you can convince me Nico better than Carson Beck. You can convince me that, so... You know, yeah, I mean, the, I th- did better against Kentucky that. than Georgia. You can, yeah. Like, I'll, I think Tennessee that. also I mean, trusts Nico more than uh, Georgia yeah, trusts Carson Beck right now. Yeah, probably a little bit. It's, I don't you know. know, but 
One uh, hurdle's a foot off the a foot off the ground. The other one's two. I just I'm excited for this one. It's going to be agonizing, but I think this is going to be a close. I think this is going to be a memorable one. We have not had a memorable Georgia Tennessee ending in a long time. I don't know how it goes, but my gut is we're going to have a final two minutes, and this is a one score game. It's my gut. I think so too, but I think the score is going to be like seven to three. I think it's going to. Be I think this is going to be a very bad game to watch. Yeah, this is going to be a disgusting that. football game. But I think the penalties will be high. Wins by three points, and it's going to be under twenty points. I and I'm ready for the group chat to be like, "Oh, the penalties got to clean up." Like the penalties are never getting cleaned up, folks. On the road, uh, they're not. No, <laughs> they're they're, they're never getting cleaned up. I'll continue to harp on it, though. It's 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 going to happen. Up. Like there, it's, it's going to be eleven it's penalties. Nicely done, nephew. The Chase Thomas podcast. Hell yeah.